developers used to think online accessibility for um, pe uh, people with disabilities was a really boring topic, um, which is a great way to start a presentation when you're going to talk about it. But I've, I've realised actually I was wrong, so today I want to explain why so many people come to the same conclusion that I did, and consequently how many entrepreneurs are missing the massive opportunity that is accessible software, and disabled people don't get the tools they need. Online accessibility can involve many things like designing websites to be easily readable for visually impaired people or software that zooms portions of the screen like you just saw there. Um, the reason I found these sort of things dull isn't as, uh, as you might immediately expect because I personally have no need for accessible software because many of us work in fields uh, and work on hugely interesting projects uh, for which we're not necessarily the target demographic. Now, I've always been interested in commercial things. That was an example of commercial things, sort of commercial things that I enjoy and have been involved with on that last slide. Um, and accessibility has always seemed to me to be inherently uncommercial, more like something that would get in the way of making cool products um, than something I could actually get, it, um, get excited about. So the basic reason many people have this view of accessibility as being uncommercial and uninteresting is my slides are running away with me, but as it's often something crammed in at the last minute as a box ticking exercise to a project shoehorned into other projects that were never intended to be about accessibility, when really it's a sector of the tech industry in its own right, with fascinating products like any other sector. Now if you've had a bright idea, I'm sure the web design designers amongst you or anyone who's ever worked with a marketing agency might have had this bright idea somewhat stifled by being made to produce content in a variety of formats, languages, type sizes, and so on, in order to be readable by anyone. You might be trying to change the world with your amazing new spin on social networking, or you might have the best concept for a marketing campaign ever devised. Either way, accessibility, as we saw on that last slide, uh, trying to cram it into one of these amazing, exciting projects might frustrate a creative person, or might prevent a business person from making money. Because accessibility has become a dirty word, associated with frustration, often because it's approached with an attitude of, I suppose we'd better do something in order to justify our investor and people's badge, rather than what uh, a lot of great businesses, I think, the attitude that they're approached with, what can we do to make a really amazing product? Which is the attitude I think you should approach um, any of these things with. So while, while I just find um, my notes again, the, the reason I've developed an interest in digital accessibility is because my partner works for the charity we saw on that last slide there. It's sort of like that game where you answer the question someone asked before, the way I'm presenting this, but never mind. Um, so the reason I've developed this interest in accessibility is because my partner um, deals with a lot of the sort of uh, software that accessible people use. So through this, I've seen accessibility isn't just delivered via this tiresome administrative process, but it's actually something real people use every day, and it really does improve people's lives. And that's exactly the sort of mass market, interesting product loads of people would want to be involved in. So how many startups, some more frivolous ones we saw on the screen a moment ago, how many tech companies can say that sort of thing? The trouble is though, no one's yet built a massive world dominating company, the sort that might appear in the Fortune 500, around accessible software. So while it may seem crass to talk about making money from accessibility, it's important to recognise that if companies realise it's not dull, it's not just a time sink, it could be a profitable thing to do. Um, it would be good for competition, it would be good for users. So JAWS and Zoom text, a couple of slides ago, God knows how many slides ago now, are two market leading pieces of accessibility software. JAWS is a screen reader, which audibly reads the text on screen for a visually impaired person, while Zoom text provides on screen magnification. And both of these packages are quite unaffordable for home users at over £400 each. So the, the existing market could really do with shaking up. And I believe that will only happen when the financial incentives for businesses to do so are clear. Google have built a business around giving stuff away for free. Search, email and so on. So they can get as many people looking at their adverts as possible. So wouldn't it make financial sense for companies to provide free accessibility software in order to attract as many users as possible that they can monetize elsewhere in the same way um, Google gives away uh, free services? And wouldn't it make financial sense for a startup to build a business around accessible software with the aim of being acquired by a massive tech company like Google, like Apple, who we saw a couple of slides ago? And when accessibility is moved in this way from being an annoying box you have to tick at the end of a project to a whole challenge that you can define yourself from the ground up, 
doesn't it become a much more attractive prospect creatively? Um, sort of dealing with the two issues that I said are one of the reasons all of the people see accessibility as being quite dull. So, in summary, I think accessibility is a missed opportunity for tech businesses, and by re-evaluating how it's delivered, businesses can be encouraged to get involved in it, uh, bringing about real benefits of accessibility to the people who actually need them. Thank you.